Developments coming in from Ukraine are fast and furious and infuriating sometimes. At Newsy, we try to give you the context during scary moments. Just talk with the people who have dedicated their lives to these issues, to these places. Marie Ivanovich is the former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. Before that, Armenia and Kyrgyzstan. She's the author of the brand new book just published today, Lessons from the Edge, about her life and career in the Foreign Service. Ambassador Yovanovitch, it is very good to have you here. Is this a war of annihilation, as President Zelensky has said? Annihilation, what does that look like? I think it is a war of annihilation or extermination. It looks like exactly what we're seeing on the ground in Ukraine, where uh, you have illegal weapons, weapons of destruction aimed at the military, but more importantly, at civilians, at women and children, at handicapped people, at civilian structures, nuclear power plants. I mean, it is appalling, the destruction that we are seeing. And so, yes, it is a war of extermination. President Zelensky has said publicly, loudly, something that Vladimir Putin has wanted to hear. And he said it for a second time now. I'm going to paraphrase here because I saw several translations. Quote, we realize that Ukraine will not become a member of NATO. We understand this. We are reasonable people. Ambassador, this is what Putin wanted. What more would it take to stop this? Well, it was part of what Putin said he wanted. But, uh, you know, this is a guy who knows well how to uh, move the goalposts and confuse his adversaries um, and, and, and others. So, you know, he's also said a lot of other things about what he wants. And more uh, so, uh, you know, recognizing uh, the, uh, um, the the Donbass entities and Crimea, uh, their Crimea and, um, very, and making Ukraine a neutral country. Um, so he's, he's said that. But he has also said over time that um, basically he wants to remake uh, the Russian Empire or the Soviet uh, Union. Um, he certainly has uh, his eye on uh, other countries further, uh, further west. And I think the other thing is he has said that the international rules-based order doesn't work and that they want to remake it. This is the order that after World War II, countries came together, including the Soviet Union, um, to create principles, institutions that would help us live a more peaceful life. And it turned out also a more prosperous and a more free life. And so that is a real threat to, frankly, all of us. As we see Russian forces do things like yank a Ukrainian mayor off the street, install a puppet, what sort of tactics are we dealing with here? Well, I think, you know, he's not following any of the, quote, rules of war. He doesn't even recognize that this is a war. He's calling it a special military operation. And frankly, it's pretty reminiscent of what we would call terrorism. And so I think, you know, we need to look at all of these things because this is a man who is a war criminal and his decisions are forcing others to perform war crimes. Right at this very moment, um, there are three heads of state from NATO countries, EU members there, Poland, Slovenia, Czech Republic. I saw a proposal, I think it was Ian Brimmer, he's a, a big foreign policy thinker, and he said, why don't they stay there? Why don't they dare Putin to continue and expand this war? with them there. It seems like he's saying break out of the box. Do you think it is time to break the box a bit when dealing with Putin? I think that we can't allow Putin to set the conditions for this war. Uh, this is a war he chose. He chose to invade Ukraine. But that doesn't make him the boss. Uh, and it doesn't make him the only arbiter in, in this and telling us that, you know, this is an act of war and this isn't and you can't do this and you can't do that. One of the things that we know from the past history is that if we don't respond robustly, Putin will keep on pushing forward. That's what we've seen in, you know, Georgia, Ukraine, and now Ukraine again. So um, I think the West has been doing a lot. Um, and I commend the three prime ministers for their bravery in joining Zelensky, in, uh, who is also quite courageous, uh, in Kyiv. Um, I think we've done a lot. Uh, we need to keep on doing more and really think creatively about the defensive systems we can provide the Ukrainians so they can defend themselves and not take options off the table. When you say no options off the table, are you including no-fly zone? I would. I'm not saying we need a no-fly zone today or that it's something that will be done today, but um, no options off the table. Ambassador Yovanovitch, I want to uh, leave it right here for just one moment. We're going to take a very quick break, then more from former Ukrainian ambassador Marie Yovanovitch.